Good morning, Reefers. This is Cora Lust. I'm Daniel, your Reef and Support Buddy. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel already, make sure you do. We have over 350 awesome videos on reefing products and just general talking about questions and answers and stuff like that. So my topic for today is going to be water flow again. It is very, very important. I say one of the most important things you can have in a good reef tank is good water flow. Um, and one of the things I also wanted to point on is changes that you can make in your reef tank and not even know that can really devastate your aquarium without you knowing ever why. So I just kind of wanted to touch on those and then ran against deep tanks and why I get frustrated with deep tanks and how it's so hard to get water flow in the places you need, especially with the aquascapes that I want. So first of all, <clears throat> as I was saying, something that you can do to your tank by accident without even knowing is accidentally direct a pump to the bottom of your sand bed and disrupt your sand bed. Now when you do that and you create a big massive hole and all your sand gets blown all over the place, you're releasing all those denitrificating bacteria that have been in the bottom or hidden underneath for such a long time and now you are throwing off your ecosystem and it's, that's a big no-no and it happens and I just changed my phosph uh, my GFO and my carbon just to kind of combat with that problem because it was funny at the same time I did it to both tanks not even knowing it uh, and this <laughs> right here I'm going to show you when I pulled out some of the plants I was looking for the bob worm in here and I wanted to see where he was there's tons of rocks tons of macro algae all kinds so I started pulling it out and I realized without all that chato in there this thing was blowing like there's current it comes over goes over top here down that gap creating a nice jet of water and what happened was I don't know if you guys can see but it dug a hole as the current was coming down it blasted all my sand and created this huge divot not only blowing sand everywhere but um, you know releasing tons and tons of denitrificating bacteria that was underneath that should have been released so I didn't even do a phosphate water test which I should have done that's pretty bad but I just didn't have time I just immediately changed my GFO and carbon and, and let it run through the system and I did some water change but it's amazing I mean you don't realize it. there's something always in your tank something changing I was gonna say you move a rack a corals growing you have a montipora that all of a sudden you don't prune it six months go by the piece is massive and it's blocking the water flow or the light to something underneath that starts dying owning a, a reef is like being a farmer you have to prune and check and you have to have tools <laughs> you have to know what you're doing I mean I, I prune my corals a lot just so they stay in order because sometimes you want to let something catch up and grow underneath before something over top grows fast even though you may want to put a coral up top because of the light and that's the right thing to do but sometimes you need to buy other corals and kind of work your way from the bottom up you know so I know I don't have a filter on guys sorry I am the worst cameraman I promise I will fix that when we switch over to the new building I just um, have been really really busy so I just wanted to talk to you guys about that today water flow and the deep tanks like I said uh, when you block yourself you'll see dead spots in your tank and it's pretty bad if you're not getting water flow through those corals, they will die and they will look gross and they're just, it's not going to be pretty. That's why some people's tanks are on point. They're always rotating and shifting, um, like I said, as things are growing. And if you don't pay attention and clip and monitor what coral is getting what flow and what lighting, you know, things can get out of hand pretty quickly. But I'm always testing stuff out and always trying to see what's the best for the future, um, you know, what lights work the best, what flow is the best. I mean, you don't want strong blasting current always, but you do want every ounce of your tank being pushed around. You know, the slow spots in the corners, I know there's no good flow there because you'll see huge, huge piles of detritus. So what I did is I took this bad boy that I had sitting there, that propeller, that was never gonna get used because it's kind of just too massive, and I threw those in the back right there. So that keeps the detritus from settling. And then all the way over here, I did the same thing and threw one over here. And that keeps the detritus from settling. 
but it just goes somewhere else. The detritus has to go somewhere, so then it just goes down to the bottom. Now I can vacuum that out, and that's pretty easy for me to do. I use the wet-dry shop vac as I showed in another video, but you know, when I design the store, and this is something I really need to help with and I'm losing sleep over, but the filtration system for all the tanks. I do not want to sump on the ground. I do not want anyone having to bend over to service something, to fix the plumbing. I mean, I want everything built. So if this tank is here and it has to drain, we'll make it a couple inches lower, but that's it. And it'll have its own location for, since pretty much our refugiums are display refugiums anyway. I tend to be very um, visual with that sort of thing. And out of sight, out of mind. Look at this. I put all this equipment underneath here. And I go at times without emptying my skimmer and I'll come in here and be like, oh, crap, my skimmer is completely filled. Um, but these are nice because they're magnetic and you can just pop them off and move them. But yeah, my skimmer needs a cleaning big time. I'm sure that macroalgae needs to be cleaned up. But there you guys go. That's my ramble for the day. I just wanted to kind of, like I said, pay attention to changes you make in your tank. Uh, they can be huge, you don't realize it, but blocking flow for other corals can make them slowly fade and you won't notice it right away. So as your coral is slowly dying, it could be not having proper flow and not breathing right and getting the cellular respiration it needs, you know, with fresh water being brought in and wastewater being pushed away. So, so that's my two cents for today. As always, thanks for watching, happy reefing. Make sure you guys hit that like button, share a video with a friend, and we'll see you in the next one. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with a friend, and thank you for being part of the Coralus community.